In home and society, we believe that talking, discussing, and exploring ideas together is essential to the design process. Our goal is to create a platform with a new vision of micro and micro trends within this industry of interior design, generating added value to the design lover community. Design talks include then interviews with leading architects, interior designers, and showrooms to discover and discuss about what's trending and the whole creative process of any project. I am Susana Ramos, and I'm honored to have today as our guest of Home Society Design Talks, Leila Gonzalez, founder of The Measure, an interior design firm based in Zurich. Creating bespoke interiors for clients in Switzerland, uh, the US, and Australia, uh, The Measure combines extensive knowledge of furnishings, project management, and renovation to design highly tailored luxury interiors. So hello again, uh, Leila. Uh, thank you very much for being here with us today. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Susanna, for having me. It's a pleasure for me as well. So uh, it is mentioned on uh, in a previous interview that one of the aims, um, one of your aims is to help your clients create homes that inspire and fill them with joy while uh, meeting their practical needs. Could you tell us uh, a little bit more about your story as a designer and how you have been sparkling joy through interior design? Yeah, um, I think one of the things that I love about design is that it has a really transformative capacity. Design helps us take something that's completely bank or even a space that's, you know, deteriorating in bad shape and create something beautiful. And um, fundamentally, the thing about beauty is that it's subjective, right? What mm -hmm. I find attractive and beautiful might seem busy or overwhelming to one person or not busy enough and too plain to someone else. And what I try to do is to really empower my clients when I work with them, to tap into who they are, how they live, um, and then turn that into a visual story. I take their interests, their lifestyles, their cultures, and all the things that they're attracted to and really weave it together to create a home environment that they love. Um, ultimately, I think my goal is that when my client enters their home, they feel happy to be there. They feel supported by and connected to the space around them. They feel literally at home. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's the goal. Yes. Do you believe that uh, these influences from uh, various cultures and places where you have uh, lived so far uh, and worked as well have influenced your style uh, and way of working? And in <laughs> absolutely, what way? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think the first thing is that, you know, I was a first generation American, so my family mm -hmm. is Iranian and growing up in the US, you know, my home was always super different from that of my friends. Um, it was full of a lot of very beautiful, uh, you know, objects, art, a lot of bright colors. Um, and like any good Persian family, you know, a lot of rugs. <laughs> um, but comfort wasn't really the main focus of our living spaces. None of the rooms were like dedicated to certain things. And we just used all of the rooms in our house. And a lot of my friends, you know, they had like a, a set room for television watching where they had really comfortable sofas and chairs. And then they had a formal living room and dining room that they didn't really use. Um, and I think that has influenced me a lot because I feel like a home should be in every space. Um, and, you know, I was also really lucky to travel from an early age. I lived in Canada and France, of course, now in Switzerland. Um, and I've seen a lot of Europe and the Middle East. Um, and seeing all of these different ways of living, the senses of style, what is function, ideals of beauty, um, each of them impacted me in a big way. And I think it allows me to have... Um, in some ways, a more flexible sense of style because I understand that variability between culture, but also, you know, it does affect your aesthetic. I know now living in Switzerland for 10 years, what I design is different than what I would have done had I stayed in the US. Of course. And uh, talking now about Switzerland, what were the biggest challenges of starting your interior design business there? <laughs> it's a pretty challenging journey for a couple of reasons. I think, you know, one is that when you move to a new country, you don't have as wide a community or the connections to start a business, you know, both from the business standpoint and as a designer, you know, your resources are super important. So I didn't know a lot of vendors, um, local vendors or tradespeople. 
Um, and then to add to that challenge, I was originally in Geneva where I started mm -hmm. the firm with my business partner and um, I speak French. So that was very helpful. And yeah. all of a sudden I found myself in Zurich and I speak no German. <laughs> And um, it's a very different culture, despite being the same country. And so I think, you know, having to reestablish your network, both of clients and of, um, you know, tradespeople uh, was challenging. I was lucky that my business partner at the time, she had been in Zurich prior to me. So there was some groundwork to allow me to begin working without feeling completely lost. Um, but it was still very challenging specifically particularly because of the language. And I think not unique to Switzerland, but starting a business anywhere. I was also a new mother when I started The Measure. Mm -hmm. And um, I've had three children in the lifetime of my company as well. And, and that, you know, finding the time to manage your family and your work is a challenge I think everyone can experience anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so when I was preparing this interview and reading your biography, uh, I totally had that thought that she needs to manage so many things. It's it's incredible that uh, she can do it all so well and um, do such amazing projects uh, because it's a lot of changes to take in. Uh, it is, it is. And I think that's where having a network and, and wonderful mm -hmm. people to support you is essential. You, no one can do this on their own. Yeah, of course. Do you believe there is any fundamental difference uh, in design process uh, and style as well bet between the US and uh, Europe and more specifically uh, Switzerland? Yeah, I mean, I haven't worked in Europe per se, so I can't speak entirely to that. But I do feel very American in my way of working here in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, here there is um, a tendency towards a lot of face to face meetings. A lot of things are done. Um, at distinct times and I definitely have a much more American way of working where um, I'm much more technologically focused. I do a lot of my work through the computer and, and remotely, uh, which has helped a lot in Corona, I have to admit. Um, mm -hmm. And I think um, because I was trained in the US, I look for vendors everywhere. I don't look for mm -hmm. just local suppliers. And, and I think that's also a big difference for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I think it's also with style, it's a big difference because, you know, when we think of American style, it's hard to pinpoint exactly what that is because the US is so huge and there's so many different regions. And, you know, when you think of design and architecture from homes in Miami, it's incredibly different to the homes in New England and, you know, the Northeast U.S. or from New York to California. And um, something that I love about the U.S. and design in the U.S. is that it, it really is a reflection of this cultural mix. You find a lot of bold, bright, colorful design. Um, mm -hmm. And even in places with more traditional style, you'll, you'll find some modern twists or bold color palettes. And I think there is a distinction between that sensibility um, in the U.S. and Switzerland, where, you know, Switzerland's obviously a lot more culturally homogeneous and it's a smaller mm -hmm. country. Um, well, and it's not to say you don't get variation here. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you have your typically Swiss chalet wow. style and it's not something you'll see, you know, in the middle of the city in Zurich. Um, and you can see the influences of French, Scandinavian, Italian design here. Um, and even, you know, famous Swiss architects like Corbusier and Herzog and de Meuron, where, you know, there's a mm -hmm. mon modern minimalist twist to a lot of things here. Um, so, so I think you have those sort of different aesthetics and the different, um, different ways of working that, that you definitely feel, or at least I feel mm -hmm. as an American in Switzerland. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, Switzerland, of course, has all these uh, differences, all small differences in cultures, uh, depending on the on the canton that we are talking about. If we, you had to define Swiss taste in uh, three adjectives, which one would you choose? <laughs> three adjectives is really hard, I think. Um, but I see, especially more recently, 
that real sort of minimalist, even brutalist style that you have, um, especially in the architecture in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the other things I think here that you see a lot is because of the Calvinist culture and influence, um, you know, interiors aren't super flashy or, or bold and shiny. So you have a much more understated kind of classic modern style. I think understated would be a good adjective. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've never thought about uh, that influence of Calvinism or religion uh, itself in interior design, but uh, that's true. I believe that, as you said, it's not so flashy, but it's always a uh, very good quality uh, materials and designs and uh, um, it's just not the, the, the outside that is that. Absolutely. Uh, I think that's actually fashion. a really good way to, to sum it up. I think quality is really important in Switzerland and mm -hmm. beautiful design is very much appreciated, but it just doesn't have to be quite so bold in your and face. loud in yeah. your face. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that sums up the the sweet style in a in a, a small amount of words. Yeah. Um, perhaps you can tell our listeners about a project you have worked on with previous clients uh, of yours and some of your favorite memories of designing. Um, well, I've been really lucky to have some amazing clients and projects, and even before I was in my own firm, to actually have some really amazing um, companies to have worked for. But I think one of my favorite projects that I've been working on has actually taken shape over the course of uh, a few years, because it was a home mm -hmm. that was purchased by a young family here outside of Zurich. And we remodeled the home to you know suit their needs and their tastes. Um, And, you know, as time has gone on, actually, with Corona, we've had the opportunity to readjust some of the design mm -hmm. um, because the house is now being used a bit differently than it was originally intended. Um, but one of the things that I love is being on site and working with tradespeople. And in this home, I was really lucky to be able to redesign their bathrooms, their kitchen, mm -hmm. um, doing all of the material selection, designing some customized built-ins. And um, it was such a nice project because this was a large portion of it. Mm -hmm. um, and also, it was just really fun to work with a family. You know, they had a distinct sense of style, but they were also, you know, kind of adventurous and fun and whimsical. So we got to put in some fun wallpapers, use some really mm -hmm. bold colors here and there. Um, but the vibe was still, you know, more modern, more um, clean lines and yet fun. Yes, I believe when you are designing for a, a home family, you have also to uh, try to uh, predict how, how it will um, evolve in a few years. Not Absolutely. just creating for that moment, but okay, the kids will grow. Absolutely. So, so, uh, And that's actually part of what we're redesigning. You know, we had selected mm -hmm. things for their bedroom where you know the furniture is still saying but now we're updating we're adding some fun wallpaper maybe in one of the rooms where the daughter's feeling a little bit like she doesn't want so much pink we're toning yeah. that down and you know trying to change it up a little but still keeping a lot of the essentials mm -hmm. of course uh, so when it comes to choosing the right products uh, what are your main criteria uh, to look for in a brand um, for me, a lot of what I source is dependent on the project itself. So I really try and tailor everything, the furnishings, the, you know, the style to the client's needs and to their budget, because that's always um, a consideration. So when I do my proposals, you know, I'm looking for a combination of style, functionality, and, you know, for some projects, the price point. For some projects, you know, it's, it's great that you don't really need to worry about that. Um, so this, this sort of combination of these things, but I think the underlying thing, and actually, as we said, what's so important in Switzerland is that quality, mm -hmm. quality is, is really key because, you know, it's no use to have something that's beautiful if it's not well made and it's going to fall apart. And no matter what the price is, it should be usable. It should be able to last. Um, yeah. and you know, um, I, actually, like as a customer of furniture companies, I put a lot of value on the customer service because I started on the other end in this industry. You know, mm -hmm. I also worked 
for a, um, a furniture house and I know what it's like to deal with the architects and interior designers and I think how a company handles their clients mm -hmm. and how they respond to issues when they arise is is huge and you know issues always arise we're all human but um, how companies deal with this for me is also a really big criteria in what I look for. Yeah, I believe it's not really about the product because you can find products everywhere. It's about the service. That's what keeps the the clients and keeps the the people working with the with the firm. Absolutely, absolutely. Is there any particular Home Society products that you feel uh, could complement your visual style in any way? Oh uh, yeah, I love the lighting across your brands. <laughs> <laughs> I think some favorites are the uh, the Horus 2 suspension light. Mm -hmm. I love that one. And uh, the Hera suspension. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, I think one of the first uh, pieces that mm -hmm. I saw was a Boca de Lobo um, Newton sconce. Mm -hmm. And it w it's still one of my favorites. Um, and yeah, I'd love to do a project, actually. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but with the La Piaz console. Oh yeah, perfect. I love that yes. console. I would love to do a project with that. And um, I don't know, all the hardware from full cast. <laughs> yes. And, um, I'm trying to find someone who has outdoor space so I can put the uh, Olympus fire pit. Oh, okay. I love that, that one as well. That's great. Yes, it, it's really... Uh, a wonderful uh, product for outside space but you really need that outside space exactly. to put it in <laughs> exactly and there's a lot of yeah. apartments here so yeah, I haven't yeah. quite found that yet maybe on a chalet but yeah. maybe they, they will look for a real fire uh, <laughs> yeah. in that we'll case. have to see <laughs> is there uh, do you have any favorite current trend that has been around the interior design world that you really like um, you know, actually, I think what I'm loving right now in design is that people are letting go of trends. I feel like you're seeing more and more designers that are just, you know, they're pushing boundaries. They're doing things based on what they really feel is their aesthetic, and they're not tied to a particular period or a, or a you know, like a geographical style or even a color palette. And you know, I think the best place you can see that is on Instagram where you can really find whatever you want. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's almost like all the trends are prevalent now. So if you have a particular style or a particular taste, you can find it. But no one designer is just one way anymore. Yeah, yeah. I believe that the social networks, Instagram and even Pinterest uh, really helped the people, yeah, uh, people understand that they don't need to follow. They can create their own vision and their own trends, fitting their needs and their tastes. Um, and, and I think it's great. I think yeah. this yeah. more eclectic, uh, maybe style or vibe, uh, is really, really uh, getting in the interior design world. Absolutely, and, and I'm loving it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, one of the things, Leila, that I really, um, uh, I, I wouldn't say that surprised me, but I, I was really uh, delighted when I read your biography is that you, ha you have become a traditional five-star Feng Shui consultant in order to further aid your clients in creating their dream homes. Um, do you feel that in general there is receptivity in integrating uh, this knowledge in the design process of a space? Yeah, you know, I feel like feng shui became really pos popular, you know, in Western mm -hmm. countries over the last decade. And, you know, when I talk about it with my friends, with my clients, you know, the overwhelming response is generally one of interest and openness. Mm -hmm. um, but also because of that same popularity, there are a lot of generalizations and a lot of misconceptions. And sure. when I decided to study Feng Shui, I was really lucky to come across um, a practitioner who teaches flying stars Feng Shui, which is mm -hmm. traditional. And it is a very detailed way of looking at your home. Um, you know, it's based on when your home was built and, um, you know, you really have to take an in-depth look at it, um, where it's sitting in the land, what is surrounding mm -hmm. it. Um, and, um, you know, it helps you understand 
and then remedy or enhance the energies that are within your home so you can mm -hmm. reach your potential, um, you know, and be supported by your house, uh, both financially and in your health and relationships with more ease. And I think, you know, when clients hear that, they're like, okay, sure, you know, I want more <laughs> abundance, I want better health. Um, and I get a lot of, okay, what information do I need to give you? Um, mm -hmm. And I think from a design perspective, it, it really just um, further strengthens my goal of, you know, creating a home, it, it mm -hmm. helps you tap into the heart of your home, really. And it, mm -hmm. it makes it so that your home doesn't just look beautiful, it feels beautiful, it becomes mm -hmm. your ultimate oasis. Yeah, yeah. I believe that, that it is m much more of a systemic approach. Yeah. When you look for the, the history of the home, the place, also the people that have lived there, if it's uh, uh, yeah. if you're not building a home from scratch. Uh, and also seeing the home as a, a living space, a Absolutely. place with a soul. Absolutely. That, As I said, integrated vision of several factors and a case by case uh, study and analysis. Yeah. But if you had to give like three tips related to Feng Shui to improve the atmosphere of a house, what would they be? Um, there's so many. I think <laughs> I think one of my favorite tips is actually to start with your front door. This mm -hmm. is where the chi enters your home. It's like the mouth of your home, really, and it's important to ensure that the path to your door is clear, that, that your door is clean, that it can open fully and allow that energy in. Um, you know, I think traditionally here, you know, we live a lot in apartments, so you only have one door, but with homes in the US, a lot of people don't use their front door. They use their side door or their back door. And I think it's, it's really good to also have that front door be inviting and let that energy in. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, and I think you know, another tip is um, about your bathroom. So water mm -hmm. is representative of abundance and bathrooms are essentially where we <laughs> flush away <laughs> our water. And um, you know, so this is a great place to introduce earth tones. You often see a lot of blue, which amplifies that water. Mm -hmm. um, but what you want are you know, things to dampen the flow of the water, to, to stop it from draining out. Um, so earth tones really help with that. Though, you know, wealthy people tend to have more bathrooms, so who knows? <laughs> but Maybe um, golden tones could be gold, a good option. Yeah, well, so gold falls in actually the family of metal. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a little bit different, but you see a lot of um, earth tones, even green where wood actually soaks up mm -hmm. some of mm -hmm. that water. Um, and I think the last tip I will share is for bedrooms because I think this is really important for people to, you know, remember that their bedrooms are where they're supposed to rest, where they're supposed to you know, store themselves. And if someone's in a relationship, it's also it's supposed to be a place for romance. So what you put in your bedroom matters, you know. A lot of us have our bedrooms filled with pictures of our family and our friends, but if you're in a relationship, you don't want your family and friends looking at you when you want to have an intimate moment. And, you know, yeah. um, you know, and at the same time, when you're trying to rest and relax, you don't want a shelf full of paperwork and bills or, you know, um, exercise equipment where it doesn't make you feel restful so it's it's really to clear that space of the things that don't don't really fit those categories of rest and romance mm -hmm. of course of course that, that, that was a very insightful tips so 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 simple i i believe in, in it, its core but things that we we don't think when yeah, we are designing generally Often things we might know in our hearts, but don't really think about. Yeah, of course. Uh, still on the unconscious part of our knowledge. <laughs> exactly. So, Leila, just to conclude our interview, uh, what is the best uh, advice that you believe you could give to any designer? 
Um, I think, you know, when I started in design a long time ago, it was a really individualistic community and, um, or industry. And now, now you find community, you find a lot of designers who know each other and work together. And, and I think, um, part of this comes from people realizing that we all have something to offer Mm -hmm. and we are all unique and that there's a client out there looking for exactly what we have. And, you know, there are a lot of houses. So the best advice, you know, I think is, you know, just be yourself, design with your own voice and your own vision and don't look to the trends or, you know, there are people who can inspire you, but find your own voice in that. There's no need to copy. There's no need to follow. Just be yourself. Yeah. And as simply as uh, it could sound, be yourself can be very challenging, but I believe that designers, as we said, are more and more um, distancing themselves from that follow the crowd trend and trying to find their own style. Uh, also, with all these changes of the digital age and the multiple yeah. sources of inspiration that we can find so quickly in the internet and uh, yeah. everywhere, basically. And it's, it's still, you know, it's about connection, working mm-hmm. with your clients. So I might not be the right designer for one person, but I might be the perfect designer for someone else. And it's yeah. knowing who you want to work with and who would work well with you because what I have to offer needs to speak to you. And I think mm-hmm. um, if I can tap into myself and it, like you said, it's, it sounds simple, but it's not always easy to really be yourself mm-hmm. and believe in, in your own vision. So I think the more designers do that, the more people will have someone that they will love to work with. Of course. It was such a wonderful interview, so insightful, Leila. Not Thank about <laughs> only about Switzerland and design there, but uh, about design process uh, itself as we aim to, to reach in this Design Talks interview. And a completely uh, different perspective on the, um, for instance, advantage of uh, ancient techniques like, like Feng Shui, um, and the insights it can give to to design, to interior design, and to make a home, a house become became become really a home. That yeah. uh, I believe it's the goal. So thank you very much for accepting our invitation, and um, hope to hear hear from you uh, again very soon. Yeah, thank you. It's really a pleasure. I enjoyed this very much.